Hydrocephalus. <sighs> this is a difficult one. I've I've had a couple of experiences with hydrocephalus. It's actually, it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, hydrocephalus is water on the brain. Um, it's an excess of cerebrospinal fluid. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, so sorry if I am. Um, it's leaked inside the skull leading to brain and swelling. Um, this fluid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord provides both nutrients and protein, or protection, sorry, <laughs> protein. Um, a buildup of spinal fluid can occur in the brain if the flow or absorption is blocked or if too much is produced by the body. Um, this leads to increased pressure within the skull that presses on sensitive brain tissue. Increased in intracranial pressure can lead to permanent irreversible damage and death. Um, hydrocephalus dogs are usually born with another condition that causes the fluid buildup that becomes hydrocephalus. Um, a dog may acquire hydro uh, later in life due to vitamin D deficiency, um, inflammatory disease, swelling in the brain, brain tumor, or from the parrot influenza virus. So vaccinate your dogs, or vaccinate your dogs. Uh, the two main types of hydro are congenital and acquired, like I said, acquired other stuff, but we're going to go more into the congenital stuff. Um, this birth defect is most often associated with a dome shaped skull, large open fontanel, which is the soft spot. The fontanel is right here. It closes as the puppy matures and then, um, yeah, a low and back set ears and eyes that appear to gaze downward. They're also bulging a lot. Um, affected dogs may not have any obvious clinical signs, especially when they're really, really young. Um, signs associated with hydro, um, the congenital one that they're born with. Inability to latch on a nipple, feeding difficulties. Um, so, so frustrating. Um, you know, when your puppies first come out, they look normal. And you're like, why isn't it latching? Why isn't it latching? Why isn't it latching? So then you have to either bottle feed, syringe feed, or um, tube feed. Um, they're smaller than their litter mates and they have small growth. Again, synthetic milk is not as good as mom's milk, so they're not getting the same nutrients from mom and all those anti antibodies and stuff like that. They're not getting any of that. So they're gonna be behind. Um, abnormal walking or crawling. Um, the one puppy that I had that had it, um, he couldn't stay upright at all. And I'll attach this video at the end, but he, I already posted it as a short, but he couldn't, he literally couldn't stay upright. He would just fall to his side, roll over on his back and cry and cry and cry. And then when he was able to stay upright, he would circle. So circling or falling over to one side is, is another one changes in behavior in older dogs failure to house train or learn basic commands seizures are a big one um bumping into things and lack of coordination like i said the open fontanel and weak back legs now <sighs> hydro is super frustrating and what stinks is is that oftentimes these puppies they don't have personality they're just fighting to stay alive um, especially when they're super super young um, so, you know, and it's hard to diagnose when they're so young because when your puppies are a week old, anything could be wrong. It could be pneumonia, it could be whatever. So you really, it's really just a waiting game when they're really young. Um, you, time, time will tell what is going on and what's wrong. Um, like I said earlier, other defects are usually present and accompanying the first puppy that I've ever um, dealt with that had hydro, also had an underdeveloped respiratory system, among other things. It's important to note though that not all puppies with large open fontanels will develop hydro. Acquired hydro is when the flow of the spinal fluid is blocked or altered by infection, tumor, or swelling. Um, the most common cause is a brain tumor. Um, those signs are similar to congenital. Changes in behavior or training, circling, head pressing, they'll, they'll press their head up against the wall or any other structure um, to try to alleviate that pressure or pain. Listlessness, loss of vision, pacing, restlessness, and seizures. 
Um, small breeds are more inclined to develop hydro, um, especially dogs like Boston Terriers, Chihuahuas, English Bulldogs, Pekingese, French Poodle, Toy French Poodles, Cocker Spaniels, Dachshunds, Yorkies, stuff like that. Um, so basically all the dogs with large bulbous heads. How is it diagnosed? In young puppies, the large fontanelle is one of the biggest signs, um, but then you're gonna wanna evaluate all the other things, like the behavior, like does your puppy nurse? Does it circle? Does it fall over? Like, does it have balance issues? Um, are, th are there other signs? Um, Cause a big head doesn't always mean, it could be a runt, you know what I mean? Like a big head doesn't always mean that the dog has hydro. Um, in older dogs, you know, ultrasounds through the fontanelle, fontanel, brain scans, MRIs, stuff like that, those can all be used to diagnose. Um, treatment, uh, you can get medication to reduce the production of the spinal fluid reduce the inflammation with steroids, um, anti-seizure medication. Um, there is a surgery that you can place a tube that runs from the open spaces in the brain to the abdomen. But uh, that that's a really intense surgery. Um, success rates are as high as 80%. So there are considerable risks and potential complications, but uh, discuss it with your vet. For acquired hydro, Therapy is focused on treating the underlying cause. It may range from those medications to radio, radiation therapy, like I mentioned above. Um, obviously, you don't want to breed your hydro dog. That's bad, bad news. Not, I don't know that they could, but um, absolutely do not breed your hydro dog. It is genetic, and there's no health screening for it. Um, a few years ago, my vet told me when I, that was my first loss of puppy, my first litter, and it was an absolute nightmare of an experience. My vet told me to expect congenital issues in one out of every 50 to 100 puppies. Um, just because hydro is in all lines of, of large headed dogs, so um, it's, it just don't breed that dog. Or if your dog produces like eight out of nine hydro puppy you know what i mean like don't repeat that breeding prognosis for hydro puppies it depends on the severity um you know some puppies might do well with a shunt other puppies might not last that long it all depends on you know the severity um the two that I had, one made it to five weeks. That was the one that had the respiratory problems and other issues. Um, I kept him alive using a nebulizer, enemas, um, uh, goat's milk, Leerberg formula, all kinds of stuff. I mean, whew, man, draining. The other one we had to euthanize at three weeks. Um, he just... He didn't have the same breathing issues as the other one, but like, I mean, there were obvious signs that he, he just wasn't going to thrive or make it. Um, how common is it? Again, vet told me years ago, defect is to be expected one out of 50 to 100 puppies. Um, I've only personally had one. The other one was in a, a litter. I was whelping for somebody. Uh, yeah, these issues aren't for the faint of heart. Um, dog breeding is intense. Um, nothing prepared me for that, but I am thankful to have given them the best chance that I could. And in return, they gave me a learning experience. So you have to take everything as like, I did everything I could, but be thankful the experience that you've been given because you never know you can help somebody else too so um you know not all puppies are euthanized with these issues some can go on to lead a good life um you know moderately longer life but um of the two that i've experienced um they required euthanasia so um yeah next up i think is Mega esophagus. So I'll be right back.